of writing the advice column for the San Francisco Chronicle, my first guest relentlessly pursued the paper's editor. And it wasn't long after when she landed her desired position and went on to become a household name with a readership of 70 million. That's right, 70 million. She is the most widely read columnist in the world. Dear Abby, Abigail Van Buren, hi, how are you? How are you, Mike? So nice to see you again. You look so good. Thank you. Whatever you're doing, it's, it's uh, agreeing with you. Thank you so much. And you live out here now? Live in California. For how long? Well, we, live, uh, we lived in Beverly Hills for about seven years, but we were in San Francisco for about 10 years before that. Did you like San Francisco? Very much. It's a great city, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 70 million readers. How many letters do you receive a week? Oh, about uh, maybe 15,000, 20,000. Depends on what's going on in the column the week before. Uh huh. People, many people write just to agree or to disagree. What's the most mail you've ever received for one column? Oh, dear. Recall? I put a confidential in my column and asked my senior citizens to uh, respond and tell me what their problems were. Were they money, uh, loneliness, health? And I received about 100,000 letters. I'll bet the number one was loneliness. You're right. You know, Sister uh, Teresa once, I said, what is, the, what is the biggest problem in the world today? And, and without a hesitation, she said loneliness. Yes, yeah. loneliness. Particularly for the older person. Of course. They've outlived many of their friends, and they can't get around as well as they used to. People uh, don't bother to come to see them or fetch them and take them places. Yeah. They, many of them were quite forgotten. And so interesting, so yes. many of them. Such a shame, you know. Mm -hmm. How big is your staff? Well, I have eight secretaries, and I have a mail room. I have three men in the mail room open the mail. That's 11 people already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's incredible. And you started, I'm told, for a meager $20 a week. Well, um, I was going to do it for nothing because my background was volunteer work for mental health. Uh -huh. And I'd trained gray ladies for the American Red Cross for 10 years. I was a gray lady. Uh, but when I became Dear Abby, uh, the Chronicle said, well, uh, we've got to pay you something for this column. And I said, uh, why? I said, I would consider this a, a public service. And they said, well, we've got to give you something if you're going to write a column for the Chronicle. <laughs> I said, well, how about $20 a week? And they said, you're on. How many years ago was that? 26 years ago. You're getting 25 now, isn't yeah, it? One? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you decide which letter you choose for your column? Or do you, is it a group of people? Or do you, oh, you no, do no. Make, I make all the decisions. I see, yes. I do have people sort my mail because I get a lot of leg shavers and ear piercers. Mom won't let me shave my legs. Mom won't let me pierce my ears. <laughs> and so those ear piercers are even, uh, they're even, uh, uh, you know, girls. <laughs> <laughs> but I get a lot of letters that, you know, rather monotonous and uh, repetitious. But the very important ones I not only see, but I answer immediately myself. Do you ever share your, your very own problems with your readers? How do you mean, my very own? Well, you did at one time. You and your sister didn't get along all that well. Now, here you are giving advice to people, and you and your own sister yeah, well, we weren't get hitting along, it off. We get along very well now. But what about during, I know you do, but what about during that, that dark period when you didn't get along, you and she? Well, that wasn't very long. How long did it last? About six years. Uh -huh. That's long for a sister. Well, that is long. But the first, did you read my book, The no, Best of Dear no, Abby? No. I love you. You know why? Because you're honest. <laughs> you didn't say I've yes. gotten into a lot of trouble doing that. Would you? Well, now you've learned. <laughs> okay. But the first chapter of my book tells about that period of our lives when um, uh, there was a, a lot of, uh, of anger and competition between the two of us. But uh, that was over in 19. What, what was the conflict? You both did the same thing? The conflict thing? was that she started to write the, dear, the uh, Ann Landers column in Chicago. And I started just a few months after in San Francisco. I never expected to be syndicated, but I was. And, and, she, and neither one of you expected to be international as you are, either. Well, she, she wrote that column for the Chicago Sun-Times. There was an Ann Landers column being written at the time. Ah. But at the Ann Landers person who wrote the column, the Landers name belonged to the syndicate. Oh, I the see. person who wrote that column died unexpectedly. And uh, then she took it over, you see. And mm -hmm. she had, you know, some... A syndication and then I started in with the Chronicle thinking who'd want me and I was published about oh three weeks and then Charles McCabe now deceased who was the publisher of the New York Mirror at the time 
picked up that column in the Chronicle and called me and said, we've got to have you. And I said, well, I'm just writing for one paper, the Chronicle. He said, we want you in New York. And that is how I became syndicate, syndicated. Oh, sure. And that, of course, created a little problem with Sissy. But uh, that's long been over, and we are very good friends. And you and Sissy made up, huh? How, uh, how, how long? 1964. You see, we Sissy. were married together at a double wedding mm -hmm. in 1939. And um, on our 25th wedding anniversary, about two months before, Sissy called and said, uh, this is in the first chapter of my uh -huh. book, she said, do you and Mort have any plans for your 25th? Because it was hers, too, you know, anniversary together. We'd always taken anniversary trips. And I said, no, we, uh, but we thought we might go to Bermuda. And then she said, do you want to make it a foursome? Well, I just choked up and How I said, about you bet. And then from you, then on, you know, you are identical twins, too. Mm -hmm. And I have a set. And it is... I am flabbergasted at the things that happen. At the, at the beginning, you, you kind of say, well, it's just a coincidence. Like, one will call in moments. We've even had them call precisely from different states at the same time. How old are they? They're now 34. Oh. Well, there's a telepathic thing going on between oh, uh, gosh, it's states. frightening. I must, I must tell you, though, something I think is very amusing. My foot and I always sleep together, as we did every day of our lives until we were married. And we still sleep together when she visits me in Beverly Hills, or I visit her in, in Chicago. And on one of these occasions, we were sleeping together, talking our heads off until dawn, as we always, always did. And I confided that I had finally gotten around to going to see one of those X-rated movies I'd heard so much about. And she said, do you mean to tell me that you actually bought a ticket to the box office and went in to see it? I said, sure, I was curious. I heard so much about it, I just had to see it. <laughs> and she said, well, I'm curious too. But I haven't got the nerve, and yeah, you know, I'm afraid somebody will recognize me. I mean, how'd you get away with it? I said, it was easy. I put on my dark glasses and my Ann Landers wig, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> More with Dear Abby, right after this. Be right back. Oh, that's... <laughs>